So, hi everybody, it's uh, 3.30, I am standing in as chair today. Um, Mr. Clerk, are we ready to go? We are ready, Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, so, good afternoon and welcome to the April 28, 2021 DP panel. Um, the proceedings today is going to be recorded and streamed live um, during COVID. That's how we have these meetings. Um, so please try to speak clearly, um, as sometimes it might be a little bit difficult to understand. Um, I will introduce the panel. Um, there's Mr. John Irving. He's the General Manager of Engineering and Public Works, and Mr. Milton Chen, who is Director of Engineering. And uh, staff with us today, you heard Suzanne and Mr. Wayne Craig and a few other staff who are here to answer questions. And the panel, just a little bit of the details, the panel only deals with form and character. The zoning is set by council. Um, and um, there will be no opportunity for the public to delegate to council directly. So, you know, anything that you want to talk about, things like uh, parking, access, lighting, uh, architecture and landscaping, that kind of stuff, um, you need to do that today. And the information from today will be um, provided to council. And um, as I noted before, because council set um, a lot of the things such as land use and density at rezoning, that is not what we will be going through today. And uh, so if I could, before we get to today's item, can we have a motion from one of the members to adopt the minutes from last meeting? Seconder? Second. All those in favor? Thank you. And today's development application uh, is um, from GBL Architects at 8091 Capstan Way and is for two tower mixed use development consisting of ground floor retail, 72 room hotel and 132 dwelling, dwelling units. And that includes nine affordable low end of market rental units and 128 market housing unit. So to start with, if we could give a minute or two to the proponents to set up for their presentation. And after that, we'll get some comments from staff and the panel can have an opportunity to ask questions. And then we will hear from the public. I understand there is at least one public that has signed up to delegate today. Is that correct? Yes. yes. Okay, thank you. And then uh, we will have any letters uh, read into record. And um, the panel will follow that with our deliberation. And then, um, you know, council will be assuming that it's a positive outcome. Council will be hearing the panel, um, the, the minutes will be going to council in two weeks' time. So, without further ado, if the applicants could set up their presentation, please. Thank you, um, Chair. Uh, can I share my screen? Please do. This is uh, Zora Kadic. I am uh, an architect at, working at GBL Architect, and I work, uh, work on uh, this project, and I have an in-depth knowledge of the project. Uh, other, uh, there's other, uh, Amala, Amala Buddha is also uh, in the meeting, I believe, uh, in, this, uh, in this meeting, and we also have a representative of the developer, um, uh, Jordan Su, as well, there is a landscape architect present in, in the meeting. Um, well, I'll, uh, have the, I will uh, present the architectural portion of the project uh, with uh, showing the slides. Following that, uh, Logan uh, from PWL will present landscape architect, landscape design and then we have a couple of videos to show. May I start with the presentation? Please do. Uh, so, uh, project site uh, uh, located at 8091 Capstan Way uh, is uh, located uh, in the uh, Capstan uh, village of city center um, development, uh, city center uh, with the city of Richmond. 
uh, that major road, uh, loc uh, it's ro located near number three road and uh, other major roads, uh, Humby Road and Sea Island Way at north. Uh, there, there's a, a Aberdeen and a Bridgeport uh, station, um, as well as Caps and, Caps and Canada Line station that is located uh, close to the subject site. Uh, east from the site, there is a city village, village center at the, at the intersection of Capstan Way and Number Three Road, the uh, the plan supports uh, high-rise residential and mixed-use uh, commercial, uh, and uh, in, and encourages ground floor commercial, uh, ground floor oriented commercial units. It's located in RCL five zone, and uh, so we are. The project consists of residential hotel and ground floor oriented commercial or Italian. And uh, the, the slide shows the massing. Uh, we have a, uh, the net, net area is about, about 46 and a half square feet. The maximum building height is 47 meter geodetic. We have a total FA, uh, floor area ratio permitted three 3.65, which worked out to be 169,390 square feet. So, to uh, the, uh, the allowable FAR area is distributed um, as podium, three, three story podium, plus two, tra two towers that are four, 24 meters apart uh, located. Then, further, we stagger the tower moving the south tower further east. Next, uh, next we added additional height at the property line to correspond to the development, to development at east. Um, next, uh, we uh, like staggered uh, tower location uh, enable us to have a enhanced views to the north and south and uh, take uh, advantage of river views as well. Next concept is a street realm definition. Uh, we pull uh, the upper levels of the podium out and push the ground floor to create an undercut and such uh, to create a covered plaza for, that contributes for, for public for public uh, realm. Next concept um, to explain is a material definition. Uh, we use solid brick base uh, or for the podium level uh, in black and white, but while towers are more light in expression, using wall window structure to create uh, contrast to base and allow more uh, views and daylight, access to daylight for residents. And next is uh, balconies. We added the balconies and uh, also uh, do, did um, variations of the balcony so that the, there's a staggered appearance uh, consisting from clear glass at, at uh, railings versus frosted glass that appears transparent and solid to help architectural definition. Balcony treatment, uh, the main concept was to add linear balconies along the south and uh, best facades to enable, uh, to add to a, a usable outdoor space for residents, as well as those you, those are used, those, those um, help with the uh, protection from solar, solar gain. Well, North facade, North, North and East facade, uh, they don't have such large balconies. They are more uh, smaller balconies, uh, which allows more access to daylighting for the north and east facade as required, uh, typically. And the next concept is like creating the, the, the strong podium allows us to have a compelling outdoor amenity on level four, uh, which um, is used uh, for, residential, uh, for residential use for, air, for things like the barbecue, community guard, uh, gathering, gardening area, a kids playground, and such uh, other activities. Um, 
the next concept I want to um, explain affordable housing uh, unit. Um, Five percent of total market uh, of total residential area is uh, dedicated to low end market rental housing, and it is in accordance with the City of Richmond affordable housing strategy. Uh, out of 137 total residential units, 5% worked out to be nine affordable units, and we have a unit mix with one, two bedroom and three bedroom units for uh, affordable housing. And how does that all stack together? Uh, stack that a diagram at the north. Uh, we have a residential tower that stacks on top of the residential townhouse frontages at north and around the northwest corner. Then on the, at further on west, uh, at the gra ground plane, we have um, commercial units that uh, access from west and they kind of wrap around the. Uh, southwest corner and then the following is the lobby for the residential tower at south and the uh, hotel lobby uh, there is a parkade at uh, four levels that is uh, at the back of the uh, other uses uh, and then there is a hotel that is stuck on top of the hotel uh, lobby at grade and uh, it has like two two floors plus then there is the podium and another um, three, uh, another three floors. Top top of the sixth floor, sixth floor is the last hotel floor on this um, on this property. So uh, on top of the parkade and uh, uh, the third floor of the hotel, there is a outdoor amenity podium. Uh, we, we have a large outdoor amenity as well as indoor amenity is located on that level on level four in the north northeast corner and then um residential tower south residential tower is from uh from level seven up uh, on top of the um hotel hotel use and that you can see how it all stuck together in the image uh, to the right um uh, about a context plan and we are starting from south uh, east we have uh, main entrance to the hotel then main entrance to the south residential lobby then we have wrapping around uh, speed oriented commercial units with entrances from here uh, we have north uh, main um, entrance to the lobby of uh, north tower and uh, wrapping around townhouses uh, entrances to townhouses uh, north and the parkade entrance uh, at north northeast. So townhouses um, are uh, strategically placed here to respond to the neighboring context, as there are townhouses at the north side of the same street, and townhouses at the uh, east, uh, the, at the develop at the development at east. So which contributes to nice, um, like family housing looking like. How, how uh, looking the street and more more the, uh, in different in scale to compare to the other um, other uh, higher high rises and uh, yeah, I should have also said like there's Capstan Way here and Corvette Way on west which wraps around the north side and and as far as surrounding the development uh, there is a tower a couple of towers at north. Uh, there is a development uh, ready to be uh, almost ready, almost constructed to the e to the east, and there is a design for the development to the west of our site. That is a context um, context for this uh, development. Uh, next um, uh, site plan, uh, and you can see also our survey with dedication that were. Uh, done, done on for road and uh, pub, uh, Capstan Plaza and uh, and and such. Then uh, then I will go through floor plans. Uh, 
parkade level, P1 level, uh, has um, bikes, bike rooms and garbage recycling and loading and, and uh, parking. Next floor is ground floor. Uh, uh, we have hotel entrance, then a residential lobby, then commercial units, exit from hotel, and then uh, another uh, tower entrance into townhouses uh, with uh, their individual entrances from, uh, from the street. Uh, second floor uh, has hotel rooms and an uh, amenity, lounge amenity that is overlooking the plaza there and the second floor of townhouses. Then the uh, third floor is of the hotels, hotel rooms plus residential. Uh, level four is the podium level with uh, amenity, indoor amenity located right here. Uh, indoor amenity uh, has gym and pool and also outdoor residential uh, amenity, uh, large amenity. Uh, and there is a portion of the outdoor space is dedicated to hotel use uh, that is here, and as well as there is a restaurant, outdoor seating for restaurant uh, here. So this is hotel and this is still residential. Uh, they also have some private patios here. Um, and you can see uh, color coded by uh, bed bedroom unit and hotel by use. So level five uh, hotel and residences, level six uh, hotel and residential use from level seven up uh, both towers are residential. <clears throat> Excuse me. 11, 12, 13 uh, units on 14th floor <clears throat> have, have access to a rooftop terraces <clears throat> on top. I'll, I'll show a couple of sections. Uh, this is section through the North Tower looking north and uh, amenity. Uh, another section uh, looking west through, through both towers. And uh, now next, uh, I will go. I will show a design through like three D images. Um, a, a few. Uh, so, uh, so you can see a concept of a solid base uh, at, at, at uh, a solid base of the podium with white and and black, and you can see different design for the, uh, the different expression for towers. Uh, here with accent uh, accent color in copper and uh, white and uh, black gray. Uh, this view is from also from the in the south um, west more west uh, location, just wrapping around that solid base uh, break of the white color with the, with the dark color, and you can see a columns of uh, different treatments starting for. Um, townhouses and a similar uh, view and this is a view from the from north to west uh, showing uh, the, the different expression of townhouses it's small there's more uh, smaller scale uh, elements that are uh, there's more repetition there's uh, there are porches individual porches balconies and and uh, semi-private use and then more more like ice on the street is more house-like environment that this uh, respond uh, to the neighboring context of other townhouses uh, and this is south elevation showing the hotel elevation that uh, has a little bit different um, uh, language architectural language uh, and that treatment wraps around here and you can see accent colors uh, within this um, solid white uh, podium. Uh, I will show up a few uh, details at grade, like uh, entrances. Entrance to the North Tower lobby um, has a distinctive uh, arches that are like copper with illumination that illuminates the pathway leading toward the entrance to the lobby 
uh, this together with landscaping creates a nice ambient and there's this signage and kind of signifying a front door or entrance. Uh, South Tower has a kind of similar but yet a little bit different uh, expression. It has a, a vestibule, the arch is actually a vestibule uh, formed all the way around the vestibule. Uh, it is also the uh, same material with signage on top. And then we have a strip lighting, strip li light uh, around to illuminate the area here. Um, a hotel has a different expression. It's more like a, um, a, it's a, a, it has a dark brick and it has a, a uh, a space here, there is an outdoor seating for a restaurant with nice pergola, and it's a, a different scale altogether to, compared to residential. The fenestration, uh, the kind of fenestration from here carries around uh, at, the, at the grade, and we can see the different details of the uh, white uh, brick uh, box uh, around here. Amenities, um, uh, as mentioned, and there we have a pool and the gym uh, as indoor amenity, uh, and then outdoor portion. Uh, it has a pool patio at this side, as well, and then um, outdoor amenity for um, uh, children play and gardening and and things like that. It kind of cascades, uh, and, and uh, it's a nice. Uh, it, um, there is a portion of the um, outdoor amenity used for hotel. A hotel uh, guests do not have access to pool and the gym. Um, residents of the South Tower do have access through from court through here to uh, to the outdoor amenity, and they can see we have gym, sauna, and uh, and, and so on. Yeah, and um, uh, project specific corner plaza and public art. Uh, this corner is, uh, sorry, I should, this corner is a uh, most visually, um, uh, most visually impactful po portion of the project. And uh, it is at uh, crossing at two, two stations to uh, streets and um, so that th th there is a um, few components to make this space uh, a landmark and uh, important uh, portion of the project. Uh, first, the building undercut itself is a very strong visual, uh, visual element. Then we have a one strong uh, column supporting that mass of the podium here. Then we have a soffit, uh, illuminated soffit. Uh, the soffit uh, will be comprised of a um, um, canvas or a screen uh, that will have an image applied to it. And there will be a soft, il soft light illumination uh, from, 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 uh, from top uh, that it is, uh, so the, the that element will contribute to dynamic of this space because it is going to be uh, varied during the different time of the day. At day, it's uh, image itself. At night, it, there is a soft illumination. Uh, we did uh, pay, we will pay close attention to uh, how it is illuminated. And here I did, added a section to it showing that the the, the soffit is uh, pulled back, illumination is here, and the fascia is going to be uh, suspended a little bit lower than that uh, in order also to prevent a light, light spill from the site to any other neighboring property or uh, uh, in, in residence and so on. So um, that it's supposed to be like, soft light more for ambient light uh, less for like uh, 
trying to be a too much player or or, or uh, things like that. And so, so that is a soffit element, then um, a column, and we have art. Uh, public art is located uh, next to the column. Uh, and uh, that is also another uh, element that will identify this project and this uh, this location. So um, next, I want to explain materials a little bit. So as as mentioned, uh, we have solid base. Uh, this one, solid base that is uh, black and white, and so we have brick, uh, dark brick, and light brick. Then uh, the, uh, there is a storefront. We'll have dark mullions as well as uh, mechanical louvers in the dark color. Uh, then we have a um, accent color uh, uh, in bronze. Uh, sorry, copper copper accent color here and here, as shown also here, and uh, glazing. Uh, there's one more page explaining that uh, white brick, dark brick. Uh, then, uh, as far as the um, frosted glass and balconies versus clear glass and balconies, and then there's also uh, perforated metal panel guard. And uh, at res at uh, townhouses, we have frosted glass panel with aluminum frame uh, added to to the balconies. So that that is, that that concludes this uh, explanation of this. PDF. Uh, next, um, next, we'll uh, we can start with landscape presentation or or if, unless you have questions. Any questions from the panel for the um, applicant? Hearing none, we'll proceed to the um, landscape, please. Hi everyone, and uh, thanks for that. Um, my name is Logan Kins, and I'm from the PWL Partnership. I'm the, the landscape designer on the project. Uh, I'll start on the north. So on the northern edge of um, Corbett Way, we've got townhome developments. So we're stepping up into those townhomes. Um, the landscape approach here is to layer that edge with planting. So we'd have some. Uh, uh, to soften that edge of the uh, the wall bumping up of change of grade, and to um, we're going to stagger street trees with the the um, trees at the townhome entries. Uh, moving along to the kind of northwest, uh, we've got the residential um, lobby. So there's going to be an accessible entry of that net residential lobby with featured paving, and uh, an accessible entry of the ramp as well. Um, down the western edge of the development, we've got um, some varied coloured concrete paving to help break up the scale. Um, these forms are kind of inspired from the uh, some of the forms we've seen in the aerial plans of the uh, the Richmond Airport, and uh, these forms help indicate uh, bump ups into our raised planted edges, uh, right with um, native and adaptive species as well as uh, timber benches that would be embedded into these concrete um, concrete planters. So providing that CIU commercial unit with um, lots of seating opportunities, as well as bike parking and infrastructure there. Um, working our way down to that corner plaza becomes the focal point of Capstan Way and Corbett Way as well. So um, in, the, uh, in this plaza, we have uh, Two, um, two large planters that uh, bookend the um, CRU patios. So um, these patios should uh, activate this space with um, outdoor dining and seating. Um, we've also got public seating as well within these areas with uh, timber seat forms, as well as uh, timber seat benches on, attached to the, uh, the large planter. Um, the public art feature will be located at the, and stand proud on that corner and um, should be uh, in view of everyone uh, at that intersection. 
um, and a focal piece. We have added uh, LED um, in-ground flash lighting as a uh, as a, a light touch approach to kind of enhance this in, in the evening as well and bring bring light to it. Um, in the southeastern corner where the hotel office entry and lobby is, um, we've uh, got a feature stone paving here, which will be uh, uh, help separate it from the public realm and create emphasis to this hotel entry. Uh, moving up to the uh, level four. Starting at the um, southwest corner, we've got urban agricultural areas. So here we've got um, uh, metal planters that uh, the, the residents can use for urban ag. So that's complete with potting benches and compost tables, uh, and potting tables and compost, as well as um, storage units. Uh, slightly north of the uh, urban ag area, we've got an outdoor dining with a planted buffer, and um, that's all composite decking along there uh, to create a softer feel. We've also um, allowed for a, a large outdoor trellis over a um, barbecue and outdoor sink area for uh, a sense of enclosure and to, uh, to reduce the scale as well. Uh, slightly north of this area is where the uh, children's play is. So um, where that beige patch is, we've got a, a children's climbing structure and slide and spinner and um, a bisecting path that goes between there and uh, slightly to the east, we've got the large lawn space where kids and families can sit and gather and uh, kick a ball around as well as a perimeter pathway where kids can bike and track as well um, around this path, but also um, provide accessible areas for everyone. Um, on the edge of this pathway, we have a, a range of seating that is uh, a seat wall seating as well. On the, the far eastern edge, there's a uh, glass canopy structure that is uh, a covered walkway that travels from the hotel to the pool. Um, along this edge, we are proposing a, um, a green screen trellis that will help uh, soften the edge um, from the neighboring development as well. To the north, uh, the pocket of landscape there, we have a uh, private pool patio, uh, well, the, the pool patio um, with uh, a fire pit as well as seating opportunities and to the far south we've got the uh, the hotel patio as well for the um, hotel restaurant um, moving up to level five and seven there is uh two patios here so uh, well patios on either side and um with raised planters with uh with trees and um, we also have an extensive green roof to, uh, to top this building as well. Um, and moving up to our penthouse levels. In the penthouse, we've got generous, uh, generous sized patios and we've uh, used planting to um, separate these areas as well. So people have access to a large roof space and roof garden. Uh, just moving down. This gives you an idea of the, uh, the section through Corvette Way on the um, left hand side there um, with street tree planting as well as uh, raised planters. And um, as we move to the, to the right section two through Capstown Way, you can see that uh, CIU patio being a, a generous 14 feet in width. Um, the section through the amenity building uh, shows the the children's playground with a, a wrapping metal planter that has a sense of enclosure for that area, as well as the amenity decking and the large lawn space that uh, opens up. And just to bring attention to that uh, far uh, right hand side of the um, of the section, uh, that eastern edge, how we are planting and providing a green screen to uh, to soften the adjacent building. Um, Lastly, we also show this uh, the section through the uh, through the outdoor amenity space, looking east, so we can see uh, the the lawn and the uh, 
the terrace planting leading up to a ramp from the accessible entryway. And um, we would be showcasing this, this uh, trellis and uh, green screen trellis that would help, uh, help screen the adjacent building. So um, that goes through the walkway as well as the uh, on top of one of the roof decks. Um, I'll pass it back to, to Zora and uh, unless anyone has any questions that they'd like to field and um, we can go through the, the fly through model. Actually, I have a quick question uh, on the street trees. Is that going to be irrigation to, cause they, have, they look fairly substantial. Uh, ideally they would be irrigated. Thank you. Madam Chair, I just had a question as well, if I may. Yeah, uh, please. Just uh, looking at your plan views here, and I think the sections for the podium level, um, the, the level of tree coverage seems to be quite different than what was shown previously on, I think, some of the elevations and red rings for the entire project, which seem to show significantly larger trees and trees that were overlapping the building face. If you could just clarify exactly what's happening there. Uh, are you looking in particular to the to the podium level? Is that correct? Yeah, I think some of the renderings that were shown uh, in the architectural presentation appeared to be showing a row of trees overhanging. Um, I guess that uh, would be your uh, west edge of the podium. They don't seem to exist on this plan. Uh, the the trees would be set back to to the townhome area, so we that there may be a, a graphic quality that's um, not showing through. But we are looking to provide trees in the uh, where where the hotel patios are, so there there would be trees along that edge, but um, slightly set back from the uh, the edge of the building, the west edge of the building. And sorry, the, are those trees around the play area as well, or is that low shrubbery? Or uh, in the in the play area, that that would be low shrubbery, but um, the trees wrap the around the townhome edge and kind of enclose the the central um, central courtyard. Okay, if that's the case, then I'm pretty sure your other renderings on the architectural side are fairly inaccurate. So you might want to reconcile those. Sure. No, thanks for the comment. And do you uh, have Patrick, a couple of small questions for me? Um, just on the plantings on the on in general, is it going to be active irrigation? Or are you looking to capture rainwater uh, and reuse that for some of the irrigation on the on the building? Uh, all all the planting would be irrigated with either um, a spray or drip irrigation. And I just want clarification. Um, you mentioned there was the covered walkway from the hotel side to the pool. Is that just for residents or is that for hotel use as well? Uh, that would be through for, for hotel use. So that, that's traveling from the hotel to, to the pool area. So okay, prim so pool primarily hotel, hotel use. So the pool is for hotel land and residential? Uh, I can let Zora speak to that. Um, it from, from what I'm saying, it is actually more a residential area because uh, uh, if we go back to show the uh, area use uh, here, uh, so that is part of the, sorry about the noise, residential outdoor amenity. Uh, this, this the residential only, like that should be residential only. Hotel guests okay. should not be using uh, out, uh, residential amenities. They should not be using indoor amenity. They should not be using outdoor amenity. So uh, the, the portion below uh, from the other, other side of this line is uh, dedicated to hotel use. So just for, just for clarification, is the red line that limits the limit of the hotel use? Nothing north of that is for hotel use, correct? Correct. Okay, thank you. 
And I actually have one more question, sorry. Um, for this building, the exterior lighting, uh, there has been some concern previously expressed in other development about light pollution. So how are you treating the lighting on the exterior of the building? Uh, we are, um, so as far as light, uh, we are uh, aware that light, uh, there, there should be no light spilling from our development to neighboring development and that the care will be taken so that the light does not spill and doesn't affect other development, other residents uh, around the development. Yeah. yeah. So uh, by, uh, if I could, uh, actually I have a section showing the right here. So for for example, here we have a soffit light that is mm -hmm. contained on site. It's not, it's not, uh, there's no light that is on the surface. It's light uh, of the wall. It is on the soffit and it is down light. It is a soft down light. We have like uh, quite large uh, undercut so they, all the light can be located in the soffit. And and there are no lights on the vertical facades of the building on the exterior then? Uh, on the don't... tower portion, I meant. Right, we don't have a detailed uh, lighting design, uh, but uh, I would say no, there should be, uh, yeah. No. Okay. No. No. Thank you. If I could just... Uh just emphasize um, the street tree comment as well earlier. Um, all, all street trees would be irrigated with, with irrigation. Okay, good. Um, a staff comment, uh, sorry, the panel, do you guys have any more questions from the panel? No, okay, thank you. Then Mr. Craig, is there anything staff wants to tell us? Yes, Madam Chair, uh, thank you. Um, a number of comments, if I may. There are two set, uh, variances associated with this project. Uh, one is a setback variance to Corvette Way. That building setback was established at time of rezoning. Uh, in addition to the building setback, there is a variance for balcony projections on levels above the third story. Those balconies uh, enable private outdoor space for the individual units as well as articulation to the building. The second variance associated with this project relates to on-site loading vehicle spaces. Uh, the loading requirements for this site were reviewed specifically based on the proposal and the land uses uh, involved. Uh, the variance is consistent with similar variances granted to other projects of this scale. Um, in terms of comments on the built form, uh, the project will be designed to achieve lead silver and be district energy utility compatible. Uh, the building has been designed to achieve the city's aircraft noise requirements and CMHC internal noise standards. Uh, there are 65 basic universal housing units in the development, including all nine of the affordable housing units. Uh, there is an extensive servicing agreement associated with this project for road and, and frontage improvements along all three edges. Uh, the improvements will include road widening along Corvette Way and Capstan Way. Um, and uh, I believe the architect uh, in their presentation detailed the extensive green roofs involved in the project. Uh, last comment would be that prior to building permit issuance, a construction parking and management plan will be required to deal with on-site deliveries and construction worker parking. Thank you. Uh, does the panel have any questions for staff at this point? Okay, seeing none, um, I understand there is at least one public delegation. So, um, Mr. Clerk. Uh, yes, Madam Chair, we have Mr. David Brin, who was registered to speak at this meeting. So, Mr. Brin, sorry, I can't see you on my screen. Uh, if you want to um, do your presentation and if you could identify who you are and provide your address for the record, that would be great. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, my name is David Brin. I'm representing uh, Strata BCS 3718, the Wall Center, uh, which represents 231 owners 
located uh, at, in two towers adjacent to the north or across the street from the north side of the proposal uh, at 3333 and 3111 Corvette Way. Um, I have uh, just a couple of comments. First of all, uh, my compliments to, the, to GBL. I think it's a very nice design, very attractive. I'm looking forward to seeing the, the neighborhood finished, quite frankly. And we've been living in turmoil, as you're probably aware, for some time because of the Yuan Hang development. Um, however, I do have a hesitation uh, with respect to application variance A, the setback reduction. And that pertains uh, primarily to the visibility of the intersection of Corvette east-west and north-south, the corner where it turns from an east-west to, to north-south. Uh, that corner is already quite frankly problematic in the sense that um, there are trucks, vehicles, delivery vehicles and moving trucks and everything um, turning that corner. Uh, they tend to cut the corner. I realize that the road will be improved, but nonetheless, I think it'll be an uncontrolled corner. So there is a possibility of vehicular traffic creating a problem there. And of course the new construction um, is going to screen that corner significantly from uh, the both directions traffic coming will not see one another. So I have, I want to express that concern. Uh, part of that as well is that once the uh, joining properties, the Yuan Hang phase one is occupied and phase three, which is going to be across the street from the subject property, the traffic uh, on Capstan uh, and all adjoining streets is going to increase significantly. Again, adding in my view, a level of risk with what amounts to a nearly blind corner. Uh, the second comment I have is uh, relevant to application variance B. And uh, although I've heard mention about uh, the truck loading spaces being reduced in other developments of similar size, uh, we are generally opposed or cautious with regard to a reduction in tro uh, truck loading spaces. And please be reminded that um, once again, because of the increase in traffic density and so on, the neighborhood density, there will be many more vehicles stopped on the street for various reasons. Um, particularly in this case where a hotel involves significant in and out movement, deliveries, airport shuttles and the like very likely and uh, residential units themselves these days have lots of deliveries very often developments of this nature are uh, offering up to or sometimes more than 50 percent of the units being bought for investment and rented meaning you have frequent moves moving trucks both in and out each requiring a few hours of in loading areas um, then of course Compounding that, there's the, the usual course of service vehicles, garbage collection, et cetera. Um, I mentioned that because our own strata has too limited an area for truck servicing. And uh, so we are a, a, a good slash bad example um, of moving vans sometimes parked on the street, ramping to the boulevard, or in fact, um, uh, even double parking. So uh, I just want to express a real concern about that because the, the density again, as increases um, the competition for parking and street area and loading uh, is exacerbated considerably. So with that, thank you for your time and attention. Uh, as I said before, I think in general terms, the applicant's development will be very welcome. Thank you, sir. Um, staff, is there, a, can you take some of the comments and I, I believe that the setback um, relaxation was already dealt with at rezoning, is that correct? Uh, yes, Madam Chair, the building setback was dealt with at uh, time of zoning. In terms of road improvements and traffic safety, we do have one of our traffic engineers, if should the panel have questions around that review uh, on the call with us. And I have to assume that it's gone through our traffic engineer and they've signed off on the design? Uh, yes, Madam Chair, uh, there was extensive review. The setback to the corner does comply with the city's traffic safety bylaw. Mr. Lin uh, is happy to answer any additional questions. 
Okay. And as far as the uh, loading uh, relaxation, Mr. Lin, um, that I guess also has been reviewed. Madam Chair, the loading variance um, is supported by transportation staff on the basis of, of the parking study that was done by a professional traffic consultant. Uh, among other things, uh, the consultant has done a very detailed analysis looking at other comparable sites uh, with similar type of land uses. And based on that, um, confirm the adequacy of the proposed loading on site. And during the construction period, there is a uh, construction management plan as well, Mr. Lin? That's correct, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. Um, um, maybe, maybe if I could just ask Mr. Lin to maybe summarize a bit of what's happening at that corner with regards to posted speed, traffic calming, anything like that. Um, I'm not, I assume there's no stop signs or um, will there be signage? Maybe you could just summarize what the treatment of the corner is. Absolutely. Um, so where the uh, Corvette went, um, turns from uh, east-west orientation to north-south, uh, it is a 90 degree bend. Therefore, there's no uh, stop signs uh, at that corner. However, at that corner, the, uh, as part of the frontage roads to be completed by the development, uh, that corner will be traffic calm in the form of uh, curb extensions will be provided to narrow down the street, to slow down the vehicles. And also with the curb extension, uh, parking will be restricted on the inside corner of that band, thereby uh, enhancing the, uh, the sideline issues that, the, uh, uh, that was mentioned before. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any questions from the panel? Okay, thank you. Um, I understand there are some letters as well, uh, Mr. Craig? Yes, Madam Chair, we have received one piece of correspondence from Mimi Ho, uh, resident at uh, Unit 1306 3111 Corvette Way. Uh, in the correspondence, uh, the applicant or the author raises concern with respect to the building setback, which is being discussed to date. Um, uh, there is also uh, questions and concerns raised with respect to the separation between this development and the proposed uh, wall center development. Um, in response to the concerns over the building separation, uh, this does comply with the city's uh, tower separation guidelines, uh, both internally within the site and to all externally uh, existing and proposed uh, residential buildings. Uh, and does that include the balconies as well? Yes. Thank you. Um, with that, I guess uh, panel uh, deliberation, uh, maybe I'll kick it off. Um, it's nice, I mean, we, we dealt with the Yang Hang project at the last development panel. So this is the last piece to this corner. Um, you know, I, I'm personally looking for probably uh, Mr. Brind as well to have this corner completes, completed so that they can live in peace. Um, and not be under construction all the time. So this uh, development um, is um, looks very nice and very urban and continue uh, the Capstan Way um, Greenway, urban Greenway, and have a lot of uh, pedestrian amenities and restaurants and so on and retail spaces. So I'm hopeful that this will be a great addition to the neighborhood. Um, I will see if other panel members uh, want to add to that comment. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. I, I would echo those comments and thank you for the extensive architectural landscape presentation. Uh, I had a few questions, but they, they were answered through that. Um, clearly, there's a lot of thought that's gone into this project and uh, a lot of design considerations with regards to uh, amenities, the public art, the facing, and then, of course, combining the residential and hotel uses. So, um, and further to the Chair's comments, yes, I think this would be great to see the neighborhood uh, more finished off with the completion of this project. So we'd be happy to support it. Okay. And Mr. Chen, anything to add? I would just, I would just echo the same comments. Um, it would be nice to have this area finished off and uh, have the city center uh, a little bit more vibrant. Okay. Uh, thank you. And again, uh, with that, um, I will just uh, remind everybody that this project, uh, if we it receive a positive recommendation from the panel, it will be going to council in two weeks. 
um, and uh, there will be no delegation to council. Um, I would be happy to, oh, sorry, Wayne. Uh, Madam Chair, I just want to clarify, it may not be two weeks. There are conditions associated with the development permit. Thank you, Mr. Craig. So it will go to council when it gets to council. <laughs> um, and uh, with that, uh, I will be happy to support this project. Um, and so with that, I will ask uh, somebody to move the recommendation to support the project. Madam Chairman, just before you adjourn, uh, could I offer you one further comment to, for, of, in, in favor, not only in favor of the project, but to complement the project? Um, if you take time, uh, Richmond uh, bylaw people and so on, to drive down River Road, you will find that the properties there are disgusting, um, vehicle scrapyards, all kinds of abuse going on. Uh, so in order to complement what's going to take place here and make Corvette Way and Capstan uh, an area to be proud of, I would encourage Richmond to be more diligent about policing the appearances and whatever they can do to improve the frontages on River Road a little bit further south. Thank you for your time. Thank you. We'll take that into advisement. Thank you. Um, with that, um, I've forgotten. Did we move? I move. Second. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Uh, thank you. Uh, so it's carried. And uh, it, when is the next meeting, Mr. Craig? Uh, we do have a meeting of the development permit panel on May 12th. Thank you. Uh, so with that, we'll move for a German. All those in favor? Okay, thank you. All right, thank you, everybody.